All right, guys, let's take them on. I am sick and tired of these evolutionists, humanists, and atheists taking over the culture. Are you ready? And we'll use this. Not really. I meant figuratively. <laughs> Come on. Some of you guys need help. Ooh, sorry, dude. In these next two sessions entitled Simple Tools for Brain Surgery, I will show you how to pry open that little glob of gray matter called the brain and get people to rethink their belief systems. And remember, it's all in the questions. I get to teach you four questions. These questions will stand you in good stead, no matter what the topic, creation, evolution, it doesn't matter what the topic is. If you learn to use these questions wisely, you will appear to be more intelligent than 95% of the people around you. These are good questions to use in any circumstance. Now, there are benefits to asking good questions. However, there are a couple of warnings I need to give you before we get into this. The first warning is this, and you may have already figured this out. That is, I am not a nice guy, <laughs> nor do I think that Christians ought to be nice people. And I am very serious about this. In fact, when you leave here this evening, I hope you're never a nice Christian again. How many of you have used the word nice today? Okay. Nice day, nice meal, nice shirt, okay, nice car. Nice guy. How many of you have used the word nice in the past week? Ever in your life have you used the word nice? <laughs> Tough group this evening. We use it in such a variety of ways that it means everything, therefore it means what? Nothing. It is an imprecise word. Now, if you look in the dictionary, next to the entry of the word nice, not only will you see a paragraph of meanings, but you will see the etymology of the word nice. Everybody say, etymology, ooh. <laughs> Using big words in big church tonight, aren't we? Yes, we are. You'll find that the origin of the word nice comes from two Latin parts. The root is the Latin word scire, S-C-I-R-E, which means to know, as in knowledge. However, there is a prefix that goes with it. The prefix is the prefix N-E which is the negative. It means not. So the original intention of the word nice, therefore, was ignorant. Nice day. <laughs> nice car. Nice meal. Nice shirt. <laughs> nice guy. <laughs> kind of makes you want to cut that word right out of your vocabulary, does it not? You see, I do not think that Christians ought to be ignorant of anything that goes on around them. That's one reason I strive not to be a nice guy. The second reason is that Jesus was never a nice guy. I mean, after all, the woman who was caught in the act of adultery when she was dragged before him, did he sit her down and say, you know what, I understand you had an abusive childhood, therefore you have a very low self-image. If we could just work on your self-esteem, perhaps you wouldn't act out this way. <laughs> is that what he said to her? Everybody look at me and say, no. What did he say to her? Go and sin no more. Was that nice? No. Was he being truthful? Yeah. Ah, was he being loving? Yeah. Ah, there's the rub, isn't it? You see, Christians are to speak the truth. Oh, in love. Now, there's the rub, because I can do one or the other on my own. I can be very truthful, and I become very, very harsh. Or I can just love everybody, and I become mush. The only way I can speak the truth in love is by the power of the Holy Spirit working through me. So, once you leave here, I hope you're never a nice Christian again. I hope you're neither ignorant of what's going on around you, nor so pleasant that you fail to confront people with the truth. Which brings me to warning number two. Once you learn these questions, you're going to find that there are two ways you can use these questions. You may use these questions as one would use a sledgehammer. What's the purpose of a sledgehammer? To bash and smash things. Now, what's going to happen is, after you learn these questions, 
The next time you're out, you meet an atheist or an evolutionist or a new ager or ramalama ding dong or whatever there is that's out there. What's going to happen is your eyes are going to light up. You're going to begin to drool and salivate all over yourself. You're going to reach over and grab the questions. You're going to walk over and go, hi, whappo, and watch his head explode. Now, that's a whole lot of fun, but people do tend to run away from you when you approach them that way. So do not use the questions as a sledgehammer. Instead, I want you to learn to use the questions as one would use a crowbar. Now, what's the purpose of a crowbar? Pry things open. So what you do is you grab your questions, you walk over, you go, hi. <laughs> and you pry open his what? His mind to get him to do what? To think. Sometimes that's the best you can do. Sometimes the best you can do is simply get people to think about their own position. Well, so I want you to learn to use the questions as a... Oh, that's pretty weak. Learn to use the questions as a... Oh, that's pretty over the top. And, but not as a... Sledgehammer. Okay. With those two in mind, I'm going to teach you these questions. Now, there are several benefits to asking good questions, and you're going to see that as we go along. In fact, even the great philosophers have told us there are benefits to asking questions. Aristotle said that those who wish to succeed must ask the right preliminary, the right beginning questions. There's all kinds of benefits to asking good questions. One of the basic ones is that you don't have to know very much at all to ask intelligent questions, which is why I like to ask a lot of questions, because I don't know very much at all, and all you have to do is talk to me for a few minutes, and you'll figure that one out. But there are other benefits, and we'll see that as we go along. So it's going to be a short course in analytical thinking. A short course in analytical thinking. First question that you need to ask when anybody... What's your name, man? Justin. Please hold down the enthusiasm, okay? <laughs> What's your name? Justin. Okay. Justin, I need you to do me a favor, okay? I left something in my room. Room 116. Would you go get it for me? It's over in the lodge. It's on this side, okay? I need you to bring me back something because I need it for this next illustration. I left it in my room. Would you mind doing that for me? Okay. I need you to bring me back the right-handed thingamajig. So while Justin's going to get the right-handed thingamajig, I'm going to teach you these questions. Hey, Justin, you got a question for me, dude? Yeah. Hey, kind of? <laughs> what, what is it? The right-handed thingamajig. So while he's going to get the right-handed... Do you have another question for me, Justin? Oh, very good. Come back here. Give me my key back. <laughs> I'm glad I didn't give him the keys to the car. He would have been out the door. Yeah, that's mine. You see, if Justin didn't ask me, what do you mean by the right-handed thingamajig, he might have gone over to my room, rummaged around, and dragged back, oh, the left-handed whatchamacallit. <laughs> the first question you need to ask when anybody tells you anything is, what do you mean by what you're saying? What do you mean by what you're saying? Now, I have grown more and more fond of this question. For example, let's say you're out at the mall sharing your faith, which is why everybody goes to the mall, right? And you walk up to somebody and you start telling them about Jesus and they say, whoa, you don't need to talk to me. I'm already a Christian. <laughs> what do you mean by Christian? Now, if they are, should they have any difficulty telling you? No. If they're not, do you think you'll find out rather rapidly? Yeah. See the beauty of asking that question? Well, that's... The first question. The second question is what I call the killer question. This is the question that stops most discussions on any topic. In fact, when you ask this question, eyes roll to the back of the head, jaws go slack, and all you count are nostril hairs. <laughs> because people tend to go belly up when you ask this question. And that question, of course, is, well, how do you know? How do you know that what you're saying is true? How do you know? If you get past this question, and you very seldom, if ever, do, 